Yo, shout out to Maximilian, dude. I saw his reaction to uh, the Marvel's Capcom collection and now the Capcom collection number two of, that came out yesterday. Oh, uh, was that yesterday? Yesterday or two days ago. And it was nice to see. It was nice to see his reaction. You know, he was waiting for stuff like that. If you follow Maximilian, dude, you know he's been waiting for stuff like this to happen. I mean, a lot of us have. A lot of us. But I'm a fan of him. Uh, I watch his YouTube channel a lot. Um, actually, I don't really mention people I would love to collab with, but he's actually one of them. If somebody asks me who I would love to collab with on YouTube or, or gaming in, in general, it would definitely be him. Um, but he has a video that says what Capcom Fighting Collection 2 means for the future. I'm interested to see what he says about this. Because, yes, I said it, not the recent one, not the Capcom 2, but the first one, the Marvel's Capcom one, that trailer, that this could be a huge, huge deal for the fighting game community to bring all these classic fighting games back. And better. Because, <clears throat> excuse me, because someone like me, I, yes, I play a lot of fighting games, but I didn't play a lot of the SNK. So it's, this is going to allow me to, first off, I love fighting games so much. I like to know the history of these games, whether whatever franchise it is. So that will allow me to see that. It will allow me to actually experience what I missed in the past. And also, this is good for the future as in companies in general who are releasing it, releasing it excuse me, like Capcom. They can watch to see what us as fighting game fans or just video game fans in general love out of these older ones and maybe put it in the new ones that doesn't have it yet. Because there are some features in older games that are not in new games. I don't know why. Maybe because companies think, you know, that it's not needed or whatever. But there's some things in the past that we would love to see now. What is it? It's so many. It's, it's different. Everybody's going to have a different answer on that probably. So I'm not going to get into that. But I'm interested in seeing what the future means for this game according to Maximilian Dude. So let's go ahead and get into it. I'm going to put his regular video, original video, in the description below. And actually, let me like his video now. There we go. All right. Let's get into it. Shout out to him. So yeah, in, in people's defense of either blowing chunks or, you know, losing their minds on my end, Marvel vs. Capcom was the ultimate impossibility because it was just never going to happen after MVCI. But these games did get some releases later on. Power Stone eventually got re-released, but it came out That's on the biggest one for PS me. Outside of Marvel's Capcom 2, Power Stone is a big deal to me. You can know why in the reaction I put up, but that's a personal thing. Like, it's... That hit home seeing Power Stone. I explained it a little more in that reaction. You could check it out. But yeah, Power Stone and Marvel's Capcom 2 are the biggest ones for me. Let me know what it is for you because there's eight. Yeah, eight games being released in the Marvel's Capcom collection. And then the Capcom, was it Fighting Collection 2? I believe it's eight as well. Let me know in the comments which ones y'all looking forward to the most. The top two. There's a Power Stone collection on PSP. Dark Soccer's games also got a collection on PSP, you know? The PSP ended up being like a dumping ground for a lot of these old Capcom fighting games and unique Capcom games that would eventually go nowhere. To be completely honest, dude, like your ability to play Power Stone and stuff like that has been stuck on the Dreamcast. Yes, 100%. that's where I played Dreamcast it on. Dreamcast was the system that we yes. all played and like we a got A few games too, not just I Power Stone, a few other ones. Like, why CVS2 is amazing, why Power Stone is kind of like as beloved and has as much as like a cult following as it does. We need to like talk about every single one of those. I was shot, it never continued on the after the second like 10, one. 13 years. The big deals are Power Stone 1 and 2, CVS2, and Project Justice. CVS1, uh, just great to have it, right? Just a lovely, lovely game. It's kind of like Pocket Fighter, where it's like, oh, it's just lovely to have this. Other games like Plasma Sword are Never played made it. for people like Guile Winquo. Just weird-ass Capcom fighting games that very few people have played. I think the biggest travesty of this collection is that the final game is Capcom Fighting Jam. I think I understand their, their thought process behind it, because Capcom Fighting Jam effectively has... Darkstalkers characters and all of these games do not have like any Darkstalkers influence outside. Well, CVS 2 does. I'll shut up actually. There's one game that's missing that is sort of like, whoa, this game's crazy. I don't know if it's ever gonna get a re release in some way. And it's Tech Romancer, it's the sequel to Cyberbots. That game I don't is think I ever so that one. specific to its time and stuck on the Dreamcast that it's never been on anything else, dude. There's a reason why people don't like Fighting Jam. Don't, don't worry, dude. I've made several videos explaining why that game is literal but there's a few other titles and I, I kind of understand why they didn't do star gladiator and why they didn't do rival schools one because those so this is why i'm glad these games are coming out too because some of these a nice amount of these i haven't played 
made. And at this point, Capcom has. I was kind of that guy that stuck to the same ones: Marvel's Capcom, uh, Power Stone, you know, the few like that. But these SNK and these other ones he's mentioning, this is what's also giving me excited to play this game because I want to explore all of them, even the ones that might be terrible to some people. I, will, I at least want to try because I've heard of these games growing up, just never put the time into it. And to be real, if you didn't have, like he was talking about a certain system, you wasn't able to play it anyway. So, any, let's go, let's move on. Sorry, I just wanted to explain figured that. Figured out Naomi emulation, which is effectively arcade Dreamcast emulation, which is very good. Not a lot of systems are even capable of doing that shit without source code, you know? But this is, it's effectively emulation is what they're doing, which is still something that has not really been accomplished in the industry yet. Capcom is one of the first companies to literally do this. But those old PS1 emulation games, it's a very specific arcade board that has very specific issues. When it came to emulation, there's not a lot of emulators that exist for it. That is Star Gladiator, potentially the Street Fighter EX, early EX games, and Rival Schools. So I don't know if those are gonna come out. They'll have to solve more problems. It's a very weird emulator with very specific games. Tech Romancer isn't Naomi. Oh, you're right. Games that looked like Naomi, but they're not. Like Plasma Sword looked like a Naomi game, but it was not. It was something a bit different. So I'm starting to think if that's the case, then Rival Schools, is it almost a point of like, it's more valuable to have both CVS games because they are wildly different? Does the existence of Project Justice sort of null and void Rival Schools 1? That's where my brain is going. But I think, I, th I think that's their thought process behind it, where it's like, yeah, you don't get the anime opening and stuff like that. From what I recall, there was some Wait, licensing issues. What's this game? Is that elements, was the one he's like talking about? Elements in rival schools. The anime that like intro, a virtual fighter. All that kind of stuff that people remember from the console version. That Obviously, it's not. But I've, let me know in the comments. What game is this? Put into modern day as much as possible. Tatsunoko versus Capcom is another big one. Here's the problem with TVC, and uh. again. We are in a situation now where it's like, all right, bro. So the impossible has already happened. What are the games that we have? Yeah, seen after released? all these well, releases of Marvel games, versus Capcom collection is. Yeah, after all the releases of these games, the whole word impossible has to be thrown out because, like he, he said at the beginning of the video, Marvel's Capcom was not supposed to get re-released. It was not. So the fact that's even been talked about. And I'm sorry, not just talk about, excuse me. And it happened. Like I was at Evo, had a whole booth full of it. I mean, it was amazing, by the way. Playing Marvel's Capcom 2 again. It is different on console because I always played on arcade stick. It was still amazing. Now, I know for a fact I'm going to have to, it's basically like starting over compared to playing on arcade stick when I use the controller. But still, just the fact that they brought him back and not just him, other people was talking about how it's after uh, Infinite that, uh, Marvel's Capcom Infinite that it was going to be impossible for them to bring two, one, two back, all that stuff. So now that it happened, anything else when it comes to these games, the word impossible should be thrown out the door. I mean, I always said nothing's impossible, but still, anybody who ever had that feeling, I hope these 16, that's crazy, 16 games in this year and next year is coming out. These 16 games prove that it can happen. I mean, all these companies got to do is put a little effort into it. And as you see with Capcom, yeah a joint effort from Marvel Games and Capcom. So they're working together for licensing. No other big third-party companies are gonna be getting in between. For the games that we just saw in the Capcom Fighting Collection 2, there's only two entities that really need to be concerned of, which is Capcom and SNK. Everything else in that collection is just straight up Capcom. They just own all of that shit. Those are all of Itsuno's old games and shit. Because of that, the two parties that have already kind of agreed and are working in their own ecosystem are Capcom and SNK. And it's really crazy to see that like SVC Chaos just happened, now this is happening. Bro, like Capcom and SNK are literally sharing a licensing ecosystem right now where they just want each other's games to do well. It Smart business move too. It is the best possible scenario you can even imagine. Smart. Best case scenario. The only thing we're missing is, is literally a Street Fighter character in City of the Wolves. That's where I hope this eventually goes. Mm. Those games have that. Oh it's yeah, that, that's, wow. Have... I'd never thought about that. Huh. What would be like Ken in uh, City of Wolves? I can see that. Ken, well, Ryu, of course. Hmm. They might do two characters. Like they do with two characters for Fatal Fury and Street Fighter. They might do two characters from Street Fighter to uh, uh, City of Wolves. But you know what also I crossed my mind seeing all this? I Personally, I'm another Realm fan. I, I would love to have all the Mortal Kombat games, all of them, even Shaolin Monks, all of them, into one whole package all the way to, what? What would you say, like MK9? Or even like the right before MK9? 
Yeah, because MK9, I'm, I'm pretty sure they'll hold that for something else. But all the way to right before the line of MK9 to have a whole collection of that, I would love it personally. Another round. Actually, you know what? Something's telling me that Netherrealm is watching. They're watching, and they're like, we could make a nice buck out of this. You just got to do it right. Like, you see Capcom, they're adding stuff to keep the games fresh now. So, hopefully, Netherrealm does that. Companies agreeing, making their own thing. Hey, we can put this out, right? Tatsunoko versus Capcom has a huge problem. From what I understand and what I've talked to of the people that made that possible back on the Wii, the licensing of Tatsunoko characters is not under one umbrella like it is in Japan. Those I never played that. over the span of the past like 40, 50 years or some shit of their existence. Those graphics look nice. Did not come out under one individual thing. They what were year like was that? fished up out of the pond by the West and different distributors that were making animes, if not dubbing animes and stuff like that, would grab all of those licenses and they still have them. Like the majority of them still have them. Even back in 08, 09, when Tatsunoko versus Capcom was happening, it was like, oh, this is never coming to the West, bro. This is never happening. And then eventually it does. And we hear from quite literally Seth Killing and lead producers that they work there ass off. Gameplay looked really good on that. Off to try to get what year that come out? I've never heard that game. Done. Not to say that it can't be figured that looked out really and done good. again. However, that was 15 years ago. And the licensing oh, wow. for those Dang, that looked good for 15 years ago. It's gotten easier. It's likely only gotten worse. <laughs> it's likely only become more difficult over time of where those characters' rights are and who you have to approach to and how expensive they might be. It is sort of a legal nightmare. And you would think that uh, Marvel versus Capcom is a legal nightmare. And it, it, it is. But to a certain degree, Marvel versus Capcom, you just have to deal with Marvel games. There might be yeah. some small edge cases in there, but you pretty much just have to deal with like one or two. So I do not have confidence in games like the original Rival Schools and Tatsunoko versus Capcom in the future. But dude, I've been proven wrong by Capcom now several times. They are making impossible things happen. That's what I said. After what's stuff. happened, and I think it's nice to take away the impossible word. Going to the level of effort that they I look are. forward Another to playing game. that. Sure. For those of you that don't know, Capcom re-released that game. It came out in like 1999, early 2000s-ish. It was a CPS3 game next to like Third Strike. That game was re-released back in 2012. Played the heck body. out of Guess that game right there. was available for? One single year. Guess what happened within a little bit of time after that year had transpired from like 2012 to 2013? Guess what happened around 2013? There was another JoJo All-Stars fighting game that came out, but it wasn't made by Capcom. It was made by Bandai Namco. It's the exact same JoJo All-Star fighting game that just got re-released again last year, year before. So we know where the rights of the JoJo's like fighting games, if not their games are. Those are in the hands of Bandai Namco right now. Also the reason why Capcom had to pull it back in 2012, 2013. So again, it's like on a surface level, it's like, ugh, that looks like it's only it's history now. It's very impressive. And what does Bamco do with licensing? They just throw money at it, dude. They get the license. As much as I love these fighting games, games, I don't be having the knowledge like that. It. Let's not talk about that all the time. Another one that's mad difficult is Alien versus Predator Arcade. And I know a lot of people were like, bro, what if Alien wait that was a game was in this collection in some way and i'm with you i never I love wait it too but good god damn i have zero clue that's not a marvel game situation can we get a that's clip of a it Disney as he's situation. talking i've the never knew that was a game obviously a movie and the game rights to predator games are all over the fucking place dude capcom only owns one part of that franchise and it's the two human characters oh my Do goodness i, I never impossible? knew wow it's not impossible it's literally not like these things can actually happen there are still other games that oh i love those mega man games exist. bro i played that heck out of them in arcades another mystery game that never i never knew there was an alien vs predator Stars game came out in an arcade location test only but even going back to 2021 nakayama-san posted pictures of a working build these things exist dude it's just like there's a lot of things in the way of making them happen and it isn't just a situation oh we just need to get snk's approval oh we just need to get marvel's approval there's a significant amount of moving parts that all have to fall into place to make this shit happen in my head there is a space for future capcom fighting collections to exist because to be real fighting collection 2 is Probably one of the greatest collections of games I've ever seen. Between classic 2D games with 3D games that have been sort of missed out on for a very long time. My God, dude, like 
outside of a Marvel versus Capcom collection, which is obviously going to be beloved, dude, throwing Rival Schools and Power Stone, Power Stone, on the same yes. collection with CVS and CVS I never would have thought the day would come insane. where I can play Power Stone you again, bro. Split those Unless up I had the Dreamcast, thirty bucks each or some shit. And the fact that it's like, oh, everything's in one package. Here you go, and it all works online. I'll put hours into that bundle. game, bro. Cool. That's oh yeah, man, that it's going to be cool. insane. Uh, Capcom I'm looking forward to playing that. It ain't gonna be to next year, but still. Weird games, very cool. But like the MVC collection and Capcom Fighting Collection Two is fucking crazy. These are games that you've had to pay five hundred plus dollars to play all of them if you wanted to play them in an official capacity in some yeah. way. Yeah. And it goes for the same thing for Fighting Collection Two. It is so expensive to actually play all these games by themselves. But speaking of the future, Capcom and Arika have been pretty buddy-buddy with each other in the past. If there's one thing that I, I think could have a space to be successful, but maybe not entirely successful, is a Street Fighter EX collection. Uh, it'd probably just be EX plus Alpha, EX2 plus, and then you'd also have Street Fighter EX3. There's a lot of challenges with that because now we get into PS2 emulation. Now we get into like that weird PS1 emulation stuff that we were talking about that may or may not have solutions. Is that enough games to satiate a collection? Well, maybe if you throw Tech Romancer there and in there as well, maybe the original Rival Schools, I don't know. Like that might be an appealing collection in some way. The further we get, I'm stepping back here, from the Street Fighter 30th anniversary collection, work with me here. Street Fighter 6 was heavily influenced by a very specific Capcom fighting game. Not just in terms of like gameplay, but in terms of overall aesthetic and visual design. Street Fighter VI was massively influenced by Street Fighter III Third Strike. And it was clear that Third Strike and its, you know, its overall feel, its vibe, its everything about the game is beloved still and it's wonderful. However, that game was not done very much justice in the Capcom 30th anniversary collection. It's arguably not one of the most beloved versions of Third Strike that you can play, and there's plenty of issues with it. So to me, there's another game that is a classic Capcom fighting game outside of the, the Fighting Collection 2 games and the Marvel vs. Capcom games that is clearly in a spot where people would likely spend money all over again for a Street Fighter 3 Third Strike game. I think that's a possibility, man. I really do. Online collection exists. There's a lot of assets and stuff that exist from that game that are wonderful. And it's like, oh, I wonder if the reason Online Edition never got re-released in some way is if they're like revamping it, if they're doing something to it. Because of all those old Xbox 360 games that had existed, dude, a, a ton of the old Capcom games you could still buy on modern consoles and shit. They're now mostly gone. Third Strike Online Edition was not one of them for some reason. It wasn't, along with the Marvel vs. Capcom games, obviously. So to me, there's a big spot here for the future of these Capcom collection fighting games of one that is almost guaranteed sales and success if it's given a lot of love, care, and attention. And that's Street Fighter 3 Third Strike. I'd like to think that Third Strike Online Edition assets, if not Online Edition in general, is given a huge comeuppance in some way. It's I won't be like surprised a, if they do nice that. a nice space to sort of breathe and exist and, you know, have a really great and faithful port. I would absolutely love that. I think that if there's a, a future for this stuff, I really hope that that is there in some way. All right. Well, thank y'all for tuning in. Shout out to Maximilian. Du Actually, I'm going to show y'all his reaction. I thought that was so, it was awesome to see. Hold up. Your Fitness Bossing Trace in our Biblioteca de Muerte. December 5th. This is gonna be a Look at this face. He did not expect it at all. <laughs> Eight Capcom fighting games are brawling their way onto Nintendo Switch in one collection. The Here's what the complete roster Hold of games. Up. Capcom versus SNK. Ah, what's Capcom versus SNK. What? Mark of the Millennium what the? 2001. Hold up. Project ah, Justice. What? <laughs> what? Capcom what? Oh, get, get rid of it. Delete it. Put something Street else in. Alpha 3 upper. No way. Plasma Sword. Oh my Mara god. Pistol. Power Stone. Oh. That's the reaction I like to see for Power Stone. Power Stone <laughs> <laughs> oh! Oh! Each game has its own training mode. What the what? 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 You can also visit the museum to enjoy artwork. What is happening with the same top one? Two, two, two collections? Tom Fighting Collection 2 launches on Nintendo ah, Switch. Oh, God, Kenny! Plus, you did it! Into the fray when Marvel vs. Capcom Fighting Collection. Yes. Oh, yeah, and I saw that they have the release date on here. Jesus I didn't know the release Christ. date. Switch.
So September 12th was the release date, which I'm looking forward to. And the physical copy is going to be in November. I'm getting both. Because I want to play it in September, but I want the physical copy, you know, as a collection. Yeah, but shout out to Maximilian, dude, man. <laughs> it's nice to see reactions like that. Anyway, thank y'all so much for tuning in. Shout out to him. I'll put the original video in the description below. I'll check you later.